do we practice strategic thinking? We hear about strategy all the time. And what does it really mean? And how do you lead with some strategy? So I'm Jen Whitmer, and I help teams and leaders solve conflict and personality clashes. And when we start creating, we start talking about strategy, people tend to get a little bit conflicted because there are so many components to it. And it's not clear about what we're talking about, which causes unnecessary conflict and strife. And what we want is a process, a process that helps us walk through individually and with our teams some element of critical and strategic thinking. So I'm going to give you a simple framework today to use for yourself. And then I'm going to talk about how you can use this framework with your team. It's not the only model of strategic thinking. There are far more complicated ones. But the reason I like this one is because it brings it down to something simple. And it's a process you can really do with yourself quite quickly. In probably five to 10 minutes, you can think about this on, on this level and then come to a conclusion that creates some action. And you can also use it in a team setting, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So when I'm talking about strategic thinking, we are using some higher order critical thinking skills. We want to look at several components that will help us move forward. And so these are the four thinking components I want to talk about. And ooh, let's make it so you can see it better. There we go. So we're going to talk about our senses, intuition, thinking, and feeling. And if you are at all familiar with the Myers-Briggs, you will recognize some of these. Um, but the sensing part of our our thoughts is the details and what we want to do. It's how we process this information. And we want to look at it with all the details that we have. It's the data. It's what's happened in the past. It's what have we done? What do we want to do? That is the sensing part. So you can think about those questions about what am I sensing with my physical senses? What can we see? What can we hear? What can we um, think through? through with all of the details that we have. So that's gathering data, gathering evidence, and coming up with some idea of what has been done in the past and what do we want to do. So that's the sensing. And then we have our intuition. And intuition is the big picture. It's the 10,000 or 50,000 foot view. Why are we doing this? What is our pattern that we are noticing? What's the big why? That's where your value statements for personal and your organization come in. You, What is the big why that we're doing this? That's actually part of intuition. Intuition is yes, also, what does your gut say? Because our our brains sometimes come up with patterns that we can't identify yet, but that's what our gut is saying. And your intuition is a powerful tool in strategic thinking. It can't be the only tool, but it is a powerful tool. So your intuition leans into values and patterns. And then we have the thinking. So this is what are the policies? What are the requirements? What's the logic? If we do this, then this, what happens? We walk through if then scenarios. That's the typical logical way of thinking through something. And I, this what is what we often think is the only part of strategic thinking. It's just thinking. Our minds move something quickly. If we do this, then this, and we're done. And it is, yes, an important component, but it is not the only component of strategic thinking. The thinking basis is an important way to walk through a decision, but it's not the only component. So you do want to think through actions. We've gathered our data and we've thought about what does our gut say. Now let's look at, is this possible? Can we do it? What is the if then type? ideas. So that's the thinking. And then we have feeling. And feeling is actually a really important component of how we show up in our lives. So lots of people are like, oh, there's no room for emotions at work. We've talked about this a lot. If you've been around me, you know that I think that we are whole people and our emotions are actually a really important component of what we offer 
people. It's how we connect and it's how we make decisions. You actually can't make decisions without emotions. So let's look at them and see what we're feeling. And this is the area of impact. What's the impact on people of this decision? What are the emotions that we are currently feeling, that we have felt in the past, that we might encounter? That's the feeling aspect of strategic thinking. So these four areas work together. And the framework that I like to use, it's just a quick way for me to consider making sure that I'm hitting on all the points. Because you are naturally strong in one or two of these, one of them pretty strong, and then a secondary one. And then you've got some that are not your strength. So for me, intuition is my big one. That's the one that I'm the strongest in. And I can lean into that and ignore the other components. And that's why this model is so helpful. So I call it Z thinking. And just like that, you go back and forth between these four areas of thinking. So what is the details and the data? What have we done in the past? And then I move to what are the values that I, what's the big why? What is my gut telling me to do? Then what's possible? What are the, what's the logic? If then moving through that, and then how do I feel about it? What are the impacts of the, this decision and what are the emotions around it? And then when you move through this Z thinking, is it this way? Boop. Yes. (laughs) When you move through the Z thinking model, you're, you're sure to hit on all these components that you might ignore if you don't follow a framework. And that's why I really love this framework because it helps me think about the things that are my blind spots and the things that are easy for me to forget. Yeah, exactly. Some of you are saying that in the comments. It's like, oh, I didn't think I don't like to do that part. Yeah, you're not so strong in it. And we don't like to do things that feel uncomfortable. And so this is an individual practice, but you can also bring this to your team. And while everybody can bring value to each of the four sections, as an Enneagram coach and teacher, I think there are some ways that you can use people's Enneagram personality to bring out their strengths in each one of these areas. So if you're like, Ennea what? (laughs) What did she just say? The Enneagram is a personality framework that shows us our deep motivations in the world. And we can talk more about the Enneagram at another time. But for you to know, it has nine different types. And each type has a different motivation. And I'm going to just use the numbers today, because Enneagram types are labeled by numbers. And when you've got a team of people, and you know, their Enneagram numbers, you can use this model to draw out their goodness, all of their secret superpowers on your team, use this to draw them out. And if you know the Myers-Briggs, you can do this as well. So the people who have their big leads in each one of these areas, you can pull them out. So here's what that looks like on a team. People who are really strong in the senses are often Enneagram 1s, 3s, 5s, and 6s. Those groups, those personality types really do well about the details. They like the data. They do well in what are all these components to get us to move forward and what have we done and what do we want to do? They, they move toward that way of thinking. And so they're going to naturally come up with more and better in the sensing area. So lean on that part of your team. When you move to intuition in this process, you want to lean on the sevens, the fours, the twos, the eights, and the nines. So not necessarily every one of those types, but in general, the sevens, fours, twos, eights, and nines are going to lean into values and intuition and the big why. They do it in very different ways, but those are the people that you're going to want to pull out when you're going toward what are our values and patterns? What's the intuition of this group? Pull that out of those people. So when we move from intuition and we go down to thinking, you're going to want to lean into threes, fives, ones, sevens, and eights. And that's because this group is very good at logically thinking through what are the implications? What um, if thens? And they do it in detailed ways and big picture ways, but they are excellent at thinking through 
the if the then the logical aspects of your decision making and then when you move to feeling you're going to want to lean into the nines twos fours and sixes they're going to understand the impacts the emotional connection they're going to naturally lean toward that type of process in their personality. So when you've got a group of people and you know their personality types, you can use that to draw them out. Let them be the shining example of those different aspects. And then the final piece that you have to do after you go through this Z thinking is you have to come to a conclusion. You have to come to a decision. And always thinking about it of like, Let's see how this works. We've gone through our Z thinking. This is our best thinking at the moment, and we're going to move forward with it. And I always suggest if you're new to the concept of strategic thinking in a formula, practice it. That's what it is. It's a practice. There are lots of different models, but your leadership will improve when you start to incorporate different people into your process and really lean on your team's strengths. You can develop those um, different aspects of thinking, but you're always going to be really strong in one. So invite people into your individual process, but also as a team, use their strengths to help you walk through that Z thinking process. So that is how I suggest you start practicing strategic thinking, and it will help you bring your team together and let them shine in the ways that they are good at. And that always creates trust. It creates belonging. It creates employee engagement, which is one of the best things that you can do as an employer. You hired them for specific reasons. Let them shine for those reasons. All right, everybody, let me know what you think in the comments, and I will see you next week on Monday Mentor with Jen.